My name is Gary Cooper. Uh, I am the chair of the Debug Work Group. I work for Texas Instruments, and uh, Marsha asked me to come here and explain to you a little bit about uh, what we're doing in Debug, uh, particularly since uh, Debug within MIPI is kind of different than a lot of the other uh, work groups we have. Uh, you know, work groups like Firework Groups or Unipro or Camera, they tend to work, they have a very limited problem domain. How do we interface a particular function to a mobile terminal? And that's good. Debug's a lot different. Uh, we are, have problems throughout, uh, the problem domain, domain extends throughout the chip. And so to address that within MIPI, we had to kind of come up with an architecture. And being engineers, we like to have architectures and boxes and terminology to make sure that everything we do makes sense. And in the case of debug within MIPI, I think that's important. And so that's what I'm here to try to explain to you today. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to talk about the architecture a little bit, and then I'm going to give you the executive summaries of the existing specifications and kind of how they fit into that architecture. These will just be executive summaries, uh, and I probably won't talk in detail about any of them unless people ask questions, which I encourage. Uh, but the the idea here is that this is these are published specifications. You're all doctors uh, or above, so you can see what uh, uh, you know. You, you can go and look for the details yourself, but it, you know it gives you an idea of what we've done. The other thing that I want to do is dive a little bit deeper into two of the things that we're really working on right now, and that's the sneak peek protocol and gigabit trace. Uh, so these are really the, the, the things that uh, we're dedicating a lot of effort to, and this is maybe the first time that it's been explained in any level to the doctor member, so I think that this is important. Okay, like I said, yeah, we got our problem space is broad and deep and all those other terms. So uh, debug requirements that need to be addressed exist at all the levels in a MIPI system. You've got board issues, pin issues, you need protocols for I.O., and then you need data protocols to, uh, to, so that, to define what debug is. Uh, also, which is slightly unusual usable for MIPI, is that the debug requirements exist in things that are external to MIPI. And what I mean by that is normal MIPI uh, specifications deal with interfaces where a MIPI-compliant chip is interfacing with another MIPI-compliant chip. You've got a camera that has to use uh, the CSI. Here we have the idea that there's tooling. This isn't something that's normally in the functional system. And so the tool itself is something that's kind of external to MIPI. Uh, so keeping that in mind, and, and you know, so that, that we're slightly different. And because we have all these different facets, uh, we have to try to figure out how to standardize at many different levels. Okay, so what are our goals? So I sort of started with a couple of these and started to realize, oh, that sounds pretty cool. So we looked at this and said, okay, we're going to define the standard terminology for debug. We're, you know, as engineers, we write specs, we like to have standard terminology. And I think, you know, I make a little bit of a joke about that, but I think it's important because when we have this architecture, we actually have had these sets of very diverse and standalone specifications, but we have done a pretty good job of keeping the terminology consistent across that. Actually, we've done a very good job. So at the very beginning, we defined a standard terminology so that when you look at the various specifications, when we say the term DTS, you know that that means the debug and target system, I mean, the debug and test. Uh, now I don't even know what it means. Uh, the, the debug and test system. Uh, the next D is divide. We realized that, okay, we've got to divide the problem domain. It's too big uh, on its own, so let's frame it into smaller boxes and then we can attack the smaller boxes. Uh, you know, that's the standard way that engineers approach things. Uh, we needed to determine what standardization currently existed. We weren't trying to reinvent anything that we could reuse. We knew that we had problems alone with stuff that wasn't currently addressed by standards, so we're not. That's something that was very important to us. And so then the final D was to develop, develop new specifications to address the holes in the existing standards for debug. 
In some cases, you know, you know, if the, we're, like I said, if formal or de facto standards all exist, we weren't going to try to, to, to supersede those. So, as this architecture is going to be defined in a, in a specified document that we're going to call the MIPI Debug Architecture Overview, and that's a white paper, and so you can sort of consider this presentation an introduction to that white paper, which I swear is coming, Marcia, it's going to get there. <laughs> All right, back to terminology. So in the debug world, we, you know, we had to come up with these interesting things. So the simplest, the lowest level was what we call debug and test function. This is the thing that you're actually somehow interacting with. Uh, the, the, a trace module on chip or run control module on a, on a core. Uh, and then you move up another higher level and there's this debug and test target. And this is something like a chip that has multiple, perhaps multiple debug and test functions somewhere higher up in the chip architecture. Uh, and then we bundle all of the different debug and test targets up into something we call the target system. So this is something that can have multiple guys, that, and multiple guys, multiple things that you need to touch or gather information from. So then that's on the target side. Then we move over to the other side, in the tooling side. So we came up with this cute word called the debug and test controller. And this is the hardware that interfaces. And in the classic, you'll, you'll see in the next slide that in the classic uh, debug world, this is what people used to call the emulator, the piece of hardware that interfaces to, to pins on a board, that, that, to a connector on a board that interfaces to pins on a chip. And then there's the debug and test system. And this is sort of the overarching uh, uh, system that contains a DTC, but also uh, PCs or workstations that are used to, to, uh, to interface with the user. So look, no more boring text, a picture. Alright, so this shows the, the, the top level terminology in action. This is from uh, the MIPI parallel trace interface specification. And it shows where a PTI exists, that's that little blue box, and that's what the specification is actually defining. But it shows all the other bits and pieces that we have in our terminology. Uh, the trace function here is, I mean, the, the debug and test function is implemented by this trace module. And so the function would be some kind of trace, whatever that is. Uh, the debug and test target is the chip that contains that trace module and implements the parallel trace interface. The target system uh, is the board or the phone or whatever this is that, that has a collection of these. And then over on the tooling side, we have the debug and test controller. This is the emulator that you buy from many of the you know, many uh, tool vendors and then those are connected by some other cable to a, a PC or workstation and that's your debug and test system. Okay, now back to the dividing the problem domain. So we came up with these four acronyms that, you know, sound kind of august, the debug access and control system, but what this is is just the subsystem or the collection of functions that, uh, that allow a user to directly and intrusively interact with the target system. These are the things where you're doing you know, direct run control with the system. You're halting the processor, you're reading out registers, you're querying the state of peripherals of memory. These are the things where the user really knows what he's doing when he's trying to find a problem or, or analyze the system in some way. So that's the DACS. The debug instrumentation and visibility system is different. This is the non-intrusive one. This is where you might not really know what's going on, but you know you need to find some things out. And you don't want what you're, you don't want to be intrusive to the system. So this is the bus looping, the, the trace kind of uh, functions where you're pulling data off the chip and while you're doing that, you're actually having no impact on how the system's behaving whatsoever. Uh, we have another subsystem or subdomain that we call the system test subsystem. And this is really focused on manufacturing test. And manufacturing test is like debug in many ways. It's, the, it's one of those things on the chip that nobody cares about until they need to care about it. Uh, debug logic is deployed on almost every de uh, device that you touch today, but it never gets used on, on those devices. The, the, systems, I mean, the system test stuff, the device test logic is deployed in every system and only gets used once. 
So we're both kind of in that category. Well, in the case of the system test subsystem, we acknowledge within MIPI debug that it actually exists, uh, mainly because we're often asked to share interfaces and logic with that subsystem, but we in MIPI uh, have made a conscious decision not to really specify anything there, but we keep it as a placeholder on our, uh, on our architecture block just because it makes it look better. The final big subdomain is the debug physical interfaces. And DPI is basically defining the behaviors of, of pure physical interfaces, either pin interfaces or connector interfaces. And I think that's probably relatively easy to understand. Okay, another picture. Color-coded and everything to show all the different subsystems. Uh, but I throw you a slight curveball here in the fact that uh, I, I, we have subdivided the debug access and control system. So the stuff in green and the stuff in cyan is actually all the DACS, but we have had a further subdivision where some of the DACS might be accessed via scan in a traditional JTAG manner, and some of it might be accessed via memory and, and as, as many of the debug architectures are moving towards. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I didn't have enough uh, text space on the previous slide to, to, to explain that <laughs> division. So, but anyway, you can see those access control systems. You can see in the yellow, it's the debug instrumentation and visibility subsystem. Uh, the pin interface is the, the orange stuff at the bottom, and the test stuff is in red. So I'm going to use this uh, architecture block diagram to kind of drive the discussion of where the different specifications fit in. So you'll see it a lot, but it really is just a framework to try to hold everything together. So that's what we'll move on to. Where do the debug specifications fit into this multicolored architecture framework diagram that we have? Okay, so at the lowest level interfaces, we, we actually, I don't want to say define connectors because there's, but we, we, we talk about connectors and how they should work. So we have a, uh, a document that does that. It's called the Debug Connectors Recommendation. Uh, that, and that is important. It's a recommendation. There, this is not a fundamental MIPI standard. Uh, but basically what it does is define the board level connections. And we were trying to address two use cases, the basic debug, low bandwidth, use case, the traditional JTAG, and the high performance uh, trace, and we have done that. So we have had two versions of that. Uh, the last version was 1.1, it was uh, published in 2001, and we don't think we'll, we'll have any more updates, at least not in the immediate future. Moving a layer higher, uh, we actually have produced a lot of product. We have this sneak peek uh, effort and the gigabit trace effort that are ongoing. Uh, also, NIDEN, which is almost complete, and the MIPI PTI, the parallel trace uh, interface, which uh, we've actually had two versions of the specification. So we'll start with that, parallel trace. Uh, everybody's, not many, many people are familiar with the fact that, that we've had trace interfaces on uh, chips for years and debug tooling that is connected to those trace interfaces. In most cases, they've been parallel trace interfaces of wide buses with clock. Uh, but what we realized in MIPI is that there, that from chip manufacturer to chip manufacturer, the timings and the electrical characteristics of these uh, uh, interfaces was not very well defined. So we, we took this opportunity with the parallel trace interface to to try to do a better job of defining that so that both tool vendors and chip manufacturers can understand the expectations on the link. So that was what really drove this effort. And then with the 2.0 version, we uh, developed a specification for port sharing, so where a single board level connector can be used to, to share uh, the, the, the trace connection between multiple devices on a chip and allow you to have the flexibility of scaling the amount of trace that you receive the amount of pins that are allocated to both. So that second version was adopted by MIPI in 2011, and once again, we think we're pretty much done with the parallel trace interface. 